Hello, everyone. Welcome back. You're watching Better for America, presented by AMAC, and we are here live at CPAC. I'm thrilled to have with me this wonderful, courageous woman, my friend, Penny Nance Young, president of Concerned Women for America. Penny, thank you for joining us. Oh, my great honor to be with you. I love AMAC. I so appreciate having a conservative alternative for seniors. It's really important. Oh, well, thank you so much. And uh, our members are thrilled to hear you say that. They love AMAC and always stand for it. Yes. I want to jump right in and talk about the issue of life. This is something very concerning to our over 2 million members. Uh, and AMAC proudly stands in support and defense of life from yes. natural conce from conception rather to natural death. Yes. Uh, and we, we saw such a victory yes. uh, with uh, Roe v. Wade and them saying, you know what, leave it up to the states. Um, can you speak to some of the myths that the left is uh, really creating a lot of lies? There's a lot of lies out there, a lot of people listening. I want them to be armed with the truth. When people say yes. women will die, yes. uh, that's not the, the case at all. Can you shed a little truth on what? Well, first what let really me congr congratulate you and tell you that I am so grateful that you know, as a se mostly senior organization, which I'm leaning, I'm almost there. <laughs> I'm getting closer every day. Um, that you take on like the hard issues of the day. And it's very wise to understand. I mean, you know, your members are parents and grandparents, but also like we're all getting older. And a culture of life impacts every single step along the way of life, the continuum of life. And so in, in a culture that respects life, we respect our new ones, our babies in the womb, and we respect our seniors as they age and the elderly and the infirmed and people with, you know, whatever the physical and, and cognitive issues. Like we respect all of that because we know that every single person was created in the image of God and has great potential. God loves them, we love them, and they deserve a chance to thrive here on earth until time to go on to see the Lord. And so thank you for that. And yes, the other side is so good at marketing, right? And they tell young women that it's like choosing a Coke or a Pepsi. If you are pregnant and you don't wanna be, they have a magic wand called abortion that makes all their problems go away. When the truth is, and I'm told this over and over and over by women, many of whom are my members, who have been experienced an abortion, chosen abortion, they didn't tell them about the heavy burden that they would carry and the regret that they would carry, or even some cases, physical ramifications of what they chose. Um, and so what we do at Concerned Women for America is that we get out there and tell the truth to the culture and say, I understand you may be in a hard position, but you have all sorts of alternatives. And in fact, there are over two, 2 million parents waiting to adopt. And if you don't want to be a parent, you're not ready, uh, many, many other people that you can choose would love to raise your baby and give them a warm, loving home. Um, and in addition to that, our country spends over a trillion dollars a year on resources and social services. And one of the things that Concerned Women for America is working on is something that we call life.gov. We're, we have a piece of legislation that Diana Harshberger in the House from Tennessee has, has uh, introduced and Senator Marco Rubio in the Senate introduced. And it's a piece of legislation, uh, and Diana calls it Life.gov Act, that gives one place on the internet where a woman in need can go, put in her zip code and, or her state and find out all the resources that are available to her if she wants to choose life, encouraging her to choose life. So healthcare and housing and educational resources and foster care and adoption, all the many, many things that are available right now through public and private resources. And, um, and so we hope to get that piece of legislation passed we want every person here at CPAC to call their congressman and tell them to co-sponsor the bill. Democrats and Republicans should be able to support this. This is an alternative for women. You know, we know one of the leading indicators that a woman won't choose life is that she perhaps doesn't have a, a boyfriend that will stand beside her, that or parents even that are encouraging her to abort. What if she knew, you know, maybe I can do this on my own. Maybe I, I, and women are strong. We'll do anything for I love, right? I love what you're doing. And so anyway, there's so work. many.
We have 285 Young Women for America collegiate chapters around this country, and they are spreading the word around the country on behalf of life and talking to their you know, sisters on campus and encouraging life. And they're also doing Stand with Israel prayer vigils. Beautiful. Coming up against the left and what they're doing, the really, uh, honestly satanic anti-semitism there's no other word for it that's right that has reared its ugly head it is just poison there's money coming in from i believe and towards sources perhaps foreign money i believe it is and being spent on campuses all over this country i literally have seen pro hamas rallies on campus at old miss it's happened in Alabama. I mean, places you would not even expect and follow the money. But our girls being salt and light are out there inviting the Jewish students to come. I was speaking of, uh, South, I was in South Carolina at, um, where was it, Clemson University. And they invited the, the Jewish fraternity to come. And these students wept. And they said to me, this is the first time since October the 7th that I have felt supported on my campus. Think Absolutely. about that. Yeah, that's... In Clemson, South Carolina, if it's bad there, I'm sorry, it's bad everywhere. I was just at Liberty University's booth complimenting them that Liberty was our first standing with Israel rally on their campus. We were welcomed. The place that I, and I'm telling tells now, I'm telling names. The hardest place that I went where our students tried to have a rally was, um, was in Texas, and uh, and it's hard to believe, right? It's hard to believe because Baylor yeah. University, who by the way's president, is on the board for the NCAA and not standing up for women's sports. Mm. And there's a lot going on. So oh, I love that you are really uh, in the fight to defend women, and it's women upholding women, That's mothers right. upholding mothers. It's so critically needed in this country today more than ever. I want to speak about what's happening to our girls in sports. We see that girls are being, um, I mean, all of the great work that we've, that women have done throughout the years seems to be completely upended when we allow full-grown men, uh, and we know God made man and woman, uh, a man is a man for the rest of his life, and, and has a physical... Um, uh, you know, advantage over women That's in right. sports. Um, so t talk talk to me a little bit about that and, and what concerned uh, your great organization. Thank Again, you. I can't say enough good, good yeah. things about it is doing to address this takeover of women's sports. Well, and where do I even start? Yes, there's biologically men and there's biologically women. There's only two, and we do know what a woman is, even though that we have a member of the Supreme <laughs> Court that does not. Of course, it was Marsha Blackburn, senator from Tennessee, that asked that important question um, in the in the confirmation hearing uh, for Kentonji Jackson Brown, um, and she didn't know. She couldn't say because she wasn't a biologist. And I'm sorry, that's not appropriate. Um, and you know, you're right. Uh, there, men. Ha now listen. It's the other side that first said that that uh, masculinity is toxic. Toxic masculinity. And I, I just recently, we had the shooting in um, Kansas City. It was a man who tackled another young man and saved perhaps hundreds of lives that day. It is, it is young men. There's nothing toxic about real masculinity. Real masculinity is what you saw in Kansas. Real masculinity is what you saw in the Aurora, Colorado, in the theater shooting many years ago when a young man took his his girlfriend and threw his body on front on top of her and took the bullet and he died and she lived that's real masculinity so first the left bad mouth real masculinity and tried to emasculate men psychologically and now they're doing it medically yes and you're telling young men that for whatever your reasoning is, I believe Leah Thomas, who used to be Will Thomas, who swam against Riley Gaines. And really, we knew about this issue. We had been working behind the scenes on Capitol Hill in this for a couple of years already when that happened. It was that issue that made people just sort of out in the country really understand that how far this had gone. Um, Selena Soule was a, a high school runner in, in uh, Connecticut. That case has been working its way. It'll be at the Supreme Court eventually. 
she lost to two men. And, you know, she she didn't get the scholarship that she wanted. She was harmed by this. There's young women who've been harmed in sports because they're playing against men. You just saw the issue of the basketball player. But yes. there's been volleyball players that have, you know, perhaps irreparable damage because of it. Um, it just seems like crazy, right? It's Who crazy versus think? normal. That's right. And, all yeah. these, and so really, I think this is a wedge issue for Republicans. They should run on it as hard as they can. Of course, Glenn Youngkin in Virginia understood that. And I think this is part of the issue that got him actually in the governorship in Virginia, in the Commonwealth of Virginia, because what had happened in Loudoun County, you had a young man who identified as a woman. They let him go into the women's um, restrooms, and he assaulted not one, but, but two women. It had happened one time. They didn't tell anybody they moved because they couldn't have the narrative out there, and it happened to another young woman in a different school. And so... We need what, change. More than anything else, I think we need to see we change need in leadership. Women to stand you up, you know, and That's strong right. and fathers. Women need their fathers. One of our members, Macy Petty, is a volleyball player who's been out there working on Capitol Hill and has been out front on this. She just was on Fox. Um, she was in at Lee University. You know, the men's net is seven inches higher than the women's net. Talk about an unfair advantage in every single way. But then, you know, I, there's a young woman named Kylie Allons, and you're going to hear more about her as time goes on, and I, I can't tell you right now what's happening. But she is a swimmer for NC State, 31-time All-American all champion. She set school records, and she was at that meet also against Leah Thomas and swam against Leah Thomas. But her story's a little bit different. Her issue is that this is her senior year. She's worked her whole life. I mean, the, these young women have put their hearts and souls into swimming. They didn't go on vacations. They didn't do events. They had to also do school. They had, it was like having a job in addition to school. You know, they worked so hard, pushed their bodies, and are champions. But then they get, she gets there on her senior year to NCAA swim championship. And she gets there and she finds out that Leah Thomas is going to be in her locker room. And no one told her, no one asked her permission. I mean, talk about a Title IX violation. You know, schools are having issues with sexual impropriety. No one gave, asked for consent for these young women. Leah Thomas is a fully intact male who dates girls. And he was gonna be in their, in their locker room. So she simply said, if, if you won't protect me, I, she took her stuff. And by the way, when you're swimming, you don't just change one time, you change several times. And the final suit for the actual competition goes from their neck to their knees. It's very thin. It takes about 10 and 30 minutes to get into. And um, she, she's like, I can't do this with a man in the locker room. I don't feel comfortable. Good for so her. she left and went to the, the utility closet. Mm. And several of her teammates went with her. Yeah. We have lost our minds. We need different leadership, and the Biden administration is totally wrong on this. I should tell you that President Trump, we have a, a document that's called the Pledge, Presidential Pledge to American Women, and President Trump was the first candidate to sign that pledge, and it says there's only two genders, only women can become pregnant and, be and become mothers, that they will, that as president, he will protect women in every area under policy and law, education, health care, housing, and yes, women's sports and women's prisons. Yes. And so we have a lot going on. This is very important and we are gonna work hard on this issue. Yeah, well, the work you're doing is incredible. I'm so glad that you came by the Thank booth, Penny. You. There's so much we could talk about yes. for hours. So we're gonna to have to have you back and join us. And for everybody out there listening, make sure you're voting for the candidates that stand for the protection of women life in the womb and all of the great work that you're thank doing. You. Thank, uh, you. thank you again, Penny.